Hello, my lovely soul, and welcome to Unstoppable Confidence. I am your host, Lauren Glick. I am here to bring you my energy, my motivational speaking, and me being a confidence mentor. My mission is to inspire women to own who they are, step into their higher selves fearlessly, and live a life with unstoppable joy. On this show, we are going to cover everything from aligning your life to your higher self, setting boundaries, self-growth, and living a purpose-driven life. Let's get you living a meaningful life you cannot wait to wake up to. Stop driving and start living with ease and abundance. Cheers to living a magical life. And I am so grateful to be on this journey with you. Now, let's head into today's episode. Hello, my love. And today we have Eliza, who is the founder of Kick It. You can find her on Instagram at Kick It by Eliza. I think it's really important this topic today about consistency and really overcoming limiting beliefs and fear and anxiety and all those good things. So, on that, loves, let's get into the episode. Thank you so much, Eliza, for being on Unstoppable Confidence. Um, I would love for you to introduce yourself to the audience today, um, what you do and where you're from and all the good things. My name's Eliza and thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I am the founder of a fitness and wellness company called Kick It. And it started as a group fitness class, something that I was teaching in college. And now Kick It has blossomed into uh, certifying other people to teach the class, mm. um, a virtual platform, um, apparel, so much. So, so much has kind of sm- snowballed from what was just a fun passion project in school. I love it. And I know as, well, first of all, what kind of workout class is Kick It? It's primarily shadow boxing with a hint of kickboxing. Um, We're moving to the beat of the music and we section out the class into rounds. So our signature class is 13 rounds, which is about Mm. 45 minutes or an hour. Um, But I find that the rounds are really helpful because it's good to kind of track where you're at in the workout. So, you know, we, we help our participants and even, you know, again, selfishly myself just to stay on track to know what round we're on. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) And, uh, we're really a fitness method in space that is safe for almost all levels. I'd say we Mm. are really big advocates for modifying, or we call them options because sometimes modifying people think it's a weakness, but it's not So use different language around that. Um, but it's kick it is just a tool to help people feel well in their bodies. Um, we're not very focused on calorie counting or shredding, uh, to get skinny for different seasons. It's really about just kind of flipping the script on how to use wellness. So it feels good on your body year round. Ooh, I love that. Cause I know, cause I was actually a personal trainer. I'm retired city fire, but when I left city fire, I was a personal trainer for a while. And I definitely understand that need for feeling good in your body rather than focusing in on the calories and what you're burning. So I absolutely love women that are in the space to help other women feel good rather than the weight loss and the trimming of everything in their body. It's like, why are you depleting all the things? Like, let's just make ourselves feel good. So I love that. And I know before we got on the podcast, we were talking and I really loved how you were talking about your growth of your business, because a lot of entrepreneurs seem like they have a business that just overflowed overnight. And without using any names, I do have a mentor. Um, well, she's not really a mentor anymore, but she, she was my first Instagram business coach and her tagline was she grew to over a million dollars within one year. 
Hmm. But that wasn't the truth. She was an Hmm. entrepreneur for 10 years before that. Um, So I absolutely love how you are completely raw and real with everyone saying that it was a slow burn for you to start your business. Um, So I would love, Eliza, for you to talk about that because I think it's so needed for other entrepreneurs to really hear what it takes to start a business. There is oftentimes this kind of illusion that entrepreneurship has quick rewards. And (laughs) I totally understand what you're saying about bios on Instagram. Um, I've read plenty of those myself, you know, like six figures in six months or, you know, it's like, I, I see that, like, that was that, that point where you like all of a sudden you got started getting traction and, right. and made it. But like, if you can consistently keep saying that you made a million dollars within your first year, I'm like, that's not the truth. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. a good marketing tactic, but yeah, it's, it can really be deceiving. Um, and I think that it's great. I've seen a lot of business coaches use that tactic. Yeah, I think it's great to learn from someone who has done that in a short amount of time to learn from them. But I think what is important is realistic expectations that when you're learning from someone like that, it, it's not necessarily going to happen at a certain speed that you see in their bio, you know, like it collapses time for sure when you get to learn from somebody, but I totally understand what you're saying. It's, it's not super crystal clear, realistic um, in terms of expectations. Um, I actually forget your initial question. Cause I just got on a tangent. I know, but that tangent was so good. So how, like, what was the startup of your business? Like, cause I know you were talking about your business starting in what, 2016. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So slow burn back on that track. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So the actual class I started teaching while I was in college and, I graduated in 2009 and it was about 2016, 2017. I always kind of like teeter on those two. It's kind of blur, blurry. Yeah. Around then is when I actually went full time for myself. Um, I wasn't working a nine to five anymore. I was all in on what I was doing. And I mean, it, it, it talk about incredibly slow burn. I mean, I went from teaching college to, graduating, getting a full-time job and teaching on the side whenever I could until I could yeah. muster up enough, enough hours to, you know, feed myself and put a roof over my head. And even still, that was like, I wasn't making a ton of money, but I didn't care because I just loved what I was doing. It really at that point was not about the money. I just, I wasn't even like a, in a business headspace. I was just so excited to have the opportunity to teach so much that I could um, live, you know, yeah. on my own. In, in support myself. Yeah. And then in 2016, 2017, I think that's when like the business, um, the business stuff or mindset thinking kicked in. Mm-hmm. And it's been a really interesting journey because it's very hard to continue to have a love and a passion for something like fitness. Once you start monetizing it and you turn it into a business, it's very easy to become burnt out, resentful, forget why you even started. Mm -hmm. Um, it can be very tiresome. I think that's like for most entrepreneurs who pursue something that was once, once a passion project and they turn it into a business, it just kind of shifts how you think about it. Um, and these past two years, two, three years in specific, I've seen so much growth with my business. It's been so fascinating, so Mm. fascinating because it has taken a lot of time. And even still just yesterday or Monday, actually, I was having a really bad day because I was just in a really poor headspace about how things were going, comparing myself to this time last year, comparing yeah. myself to this time, two years ago, it's not even that I'm in competition with other people. I'm so competitive with myself. Um, so it's a constant slow burn. Like that's, that's a forever thing, <laughs> you know, no, it is skipping away and working through mindset stuff and figuring out how to create something sustainable, but also something that's 
growing, you know? Do you have anyone to bounce ideas off of when you're kind of in a, a moment that you're like, okay, I feel like I'm not growing two years ago. I was in this huge growth period and now, and I'm just reading into this, Eliza. Um, yeah. and yeah. now I am in a period where it's, um, not growing as much as it was two years ago. Do you have somebody that is like an all encompassing, like CFO that kind of, or a mentor that looks over your business to help you see what you have accomplished rather than, um, what you haven't. Yeah. I actually hired a business coach in 2019, right before the pandemic. And I obviously had no idea what was coming, but the, uh, timing of it was incredibly magical because, by April, no, even March, maybe we'll call it April, 2020. I had a whole new virtual side of my business that changed my business. It just opened up opportunity for more people to take classes, Yeah, different kind of programming that I could offer that I, I wasn't even thinking of doing before. Um, and so COVID really contributed to a lot of the growth that kick it saw, which is very, um, contrary to yeah. <laughs> other people experience. So I'm almost dealing with like the opposite effect, like as we're kind of moving out of this pandemic, I'm trying to figure out what, what it all looks like for, wow. for the business. So while our virtual membership is still incredibly solid, yeah. it's more so my mindset around mm. it. It's like the anxiety of like the future, you know, for making up yeah. scenarios in my head. That's- oh girl, I know that too. Cause it's like, yeah. what if I do this and then this happens? Yeah. It's a lot of what ifs. So that's yeah. actually the real barrier. Um, mm. and even, you know, at the peak of COVID when I was experiencing this incredible growth, I wasn't experiencing it. Like I'm good. Like I've made it. Yeah. The feeling was actually more anxiety because it was like, how is this going to play out? You yeah. Know, like, like, how am I going to support all these members? Yeah. Where, and, what is the next step? Interesting. Right, right. So, and you know what, that just comes from a fearful mindset. That's something I'm yeah. constantly trying to work through. And I, you know, even talking about like the future now, like I've always just kind of had this battle in my head that it's, I'm, I'm always trying to nurture and take care of because anxiety and perfectionism and trying to predict the future can be so paralyzing. Oh girl, Um, I, I do the same things. You're like preaching to the choir over here. (laughs) Yeah. And, uh, I just, just this year, I actually just posted on my Instagram this morning about it this year. I decided this is the year of the bow and arrow for me. I'm pulling back and I'm working on, you know, my mental health, my physical health. I'm just doing things for myself that I normally wouldn't do because like, mm-hmm. ugh, I'll do that later. Or yep. like, you know, I'll do things for myself at another time. So yeah. I'm really using this year to pull back so that I can launch forward with more precision and clarity mm. and a more grounded feeling. Um, because the past few years have just felt like wild the whirlwind. Yeah. Yeah. Really wild. So that's kind of my thinking about approaching this year. Ooh, I love that. Um, that's interesting because the past couple months, um, it was about October, November, December of last year. I decided to pull back a lot on my business to really get grounded and focused on where I want to go in the future. Mm-hmm. Um, cause I was kind of in a spiral of gosh, I'm doing something that really doesn't. So it was like a different scenario, but I understand where you mean like pulling back so you can yeah. really start to ground yourself, to see where you want to go and bring your business. Like you're not going to get all these ideas if you're like on the daily hustle all the time. Yeah. So I love that. Cause that's a really scary to be able to pull back a little bit. So you can see yeah. those visions for the future. It's very scary. And like, in theory, it sounds like really cool. Like, you know, to yeah. <laughs> yourself and like going down, but when you're self-employed, it's like, what does that actually look like? You know, what does it mean to pull back? It's actually a very scary feeling, but just like to your point, I was in a place at the end of last year where I was so frazzled. I wasn't making like sound decisions that I loved because I was just stuck in the tornado of the past couple of years and not slowing down to figure out what, what I want the future to actually look like for myself. So it's, I commend anybody who can slow down to speed up because it's, yep. 
very challenging, but it's so necessary and rewarding. Oh my God. I love that. It's like, we're on kind of on the same track. Yeah. Um, so because as I think I kind of pressed this before, but when you're slowing down, you really don't have, when you're on that grind, you don't have time for those ideas to come in if you're mm-hmm. constantly doing something else. So when you're talking about grounding yourself, how do you personally do that to take time for yourself? Well, for one on Monday, I got a massage. Ooh, that, I love massages. That was, <laughs> that was really lovely. It was actually a gift card that I had that I was saving for like the quote unquote perfect time. But now yep. I'm like thinking about this headspace of this bow and arrow. And I was like, it, it was last month. I was like, okay, I'm going to use this gift card. I'm going to book this massage for February. And I'm going to be really happy in February when it pops up on my calendar. Like I'm going to be yeah. so proud of myself that I'm making time for this. And, uh, on Monday, I got a 75 minute massage and she did cupping for, uh, that's oh. the first time I've ever done it. I have, you know, the, the purple circles all over yep. my back. <laughs> um, and, uh, I've, I've also done things like things that I've never done in the past. Like I hired a personal trainer because that's I just so wanted nice. space for myself. Like I'm in the fitness industry and I can train myself and I love kick it. And I love our programming. It's more like for my mental health, honestly. Oh, I completely get it. Cause I was a personal trainer too, but, and I could run myself through, um, workouts. But the thing is, is when you have somebody like just telling you what to do, your mind could actually shut off and just it's so important. Move. It's so yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So things that I would be like, Oh, I'm not going to spend money on that. Like I'll do that later. Or, you know, like I'll book a massage last minute when I'm like feeling mm. like eight or whatever. So just trying to be really proactive and thoughtful about things that I just put on the back burner for so long. Mm, I love that Eliza. Cause it's, it's so important to have your energy at a certain level so you can run your business. Yeah. Um, and that's not really talked about as n- enough online, or maybe I'm just not following the right people. I don't know, <laughs> but there's so much talk about what we can do and all those things that happen overnight for you, like to go on a completely different topic, like the whole hype right now around crypto and NFTs mm-hmm. and how people are just like making money overnight. And it's like, what are those things that are actually going to support you. So you right. can do all these great ideas. Cause you can be pulled in so many different directions. Yes. Well, I can tell you firsthand, my boyfriend, Ryan is very into crypto and <laughs> sure, sure he has seen a crazy reward that he hasn't touched. Like yeah. everything's still in for him, but the emotional roller coaster and the oh, time he has put in to create the perfect scenario for himself has been impressive and also scary. Cause I, I also, I'm not like, I'm not uh well-versed in all that yet. So like yeah. watching him do that, I'm like, Whoa, like this is, this is, <laughs> and when he gets focused on stuff, he gets focused on stuff. So it's the same idea of like, no one sees like the time and the mm-hmm. emotional energy that goes into anything. This, the, it, but crypto is like top of mind. Cause Ryan yeah. is yeah. talking about it and doing it. That's interesting. Cause I've kind of dove into at least learning about it in NFTs. So I yeah. have a couple of them, but it's nothing yeah. that I'm like doing crazy. Cause I understand everything. Like we, you know, to go back to the, to the beginning of the conversation, everything is consistency. And I did see yeah. a post online about how long it took Bitcoin to be, to get to now. And it's been 12 years. So those people that bought Bitcoin at the beginning, it wasn't an overnight success. It took 12 years to be like, Oh, look at this. I'm a billionaire. And it's like, that was 12 years. And for Tesla, it's been 24 years. So everything that you're seeing overnight, and it goes right back to fitness of when people want to be in shape, as you were saying, like those cycles of people like wanting to lean down, um, Lean down. That was not the correct terminology. <laughs> I understood what you were saying. <laughs> Rim down and to lean up, something like that. <laughs> um, they, you know, some individuals think, oh, it's May. Like I want to be fit next month. Like, well, you know, I mean, even a month is a, a long time for people. Like that's way like totally like they're planning it out, you know, but it's like, let's start planning to just have a very well 
our um, healthy body rather than to have these like fluctuations of your fitness and your health. Right. So um, right. I absolutely love that as a part of your programming. Do you do um, the nutrition side as well? Because I know because fitness and nutrition go I mean, they're definitely two hands, right? They're two totally different things. But, um, when you have like a personal trainer, I know clients are always like, so what do I eat? And it's like, well, I'm not really versed in nutrition. So is nutrition a part of your program as well? No, not at all. (laughs) It's because (laughs) it is so different. Um, and it's not my wheelhouse and our, our instructors, that's not what we train them in. Mm -hmm. Um, unless I, I can't speak for all of our certified instructors. Some of them might have qualifications, certifications, education in in nutrition. Um, but for us, uh, we always advise, you know, different people to talk to about that. Um, or, uh, always give a disclaimer. Like I can, I wouldn't even, I actually wouldn't even tell people what I eat. I don't really, I don't do that because what I do is, is different from, you know, someone else and what someone else does is different from, you know, another person. It's just so, um, case by case and oh, yeah. personal attention. I actually find it dangerous to guide people with anything that you're mm-hmm. not well versed on, but there is a blurry line between fitness and nutrition because it's all in the wellness genre. So it's yeah. no surprise when someone asks for advice. And I respect that people want to have like a holistic approach to their wellness mm-hmm. movement and nutrition. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a big side eyer when I see unqualified people giving <laughs> information because it's just, that's not the vibe. <laughs> No, I completely get it. Cause you know, going to, back to my own personal experiences, people would ask me that all the time. And I'm like, sure. not a nutritionist. Like, it, and that's the thing, as you were saying, it can be dangerous because people have so many health issues right. and people have right. so many fad diets. And to me, yeah. keto is very scary. And a lot of people are all around keto. So I don't know. Yeah. Whole different ball game. 100%. So when you're looking for the future of kick it, first of all, I want to ask about your, your instructors and how you got them certified. And then I want to ask about your future. Um, how did you go about, and I know this is like research, but like, how did you go about having your brand certified? And now you have certified instructors. That seems like a big, a big thing. Doesn't it? It does. Right. But truthfully, it was just a matter of doing it, which sounds really kind of like annoying, but no, it's not. Cause I kind of figured that would be the answer. (laughs) It wasn't like in 2016, 2016 was, I think it was actually February, 2016. It was our first hour, my first certification that I ever hosted. Mm -hmm. I went back to my college campus actually to host this certification. And I think we had about 12 people or so that signed up for this first ever session. And I put together a manual that was like, fine, you know, like it it went through the basics and the workshop day, I remember leaving and my mom actually drove me. And I just, I like zonked out on the ride home because it was just so exhilarating and draining all at the same time. Cause it was the first time I'd ever done something like this. So I had no idea what to expect. I had never trained people to do this before. They were really my guinea pigs in this first ever session. And uh, after that, it was just fine tuning after we do four certifications a year. That's how it's been since 2016. Maybe that'll change in the future, but right now it's, it's four certifications a year. And over the course of the years, I've just fine tuned. And the first one that I did was not perfect at all. I actually, like looking back, I'm like, Ooh, I don't know. If, I don't know if I was even qualified to do, you know, something like that. Right. But it was just a matter of like trying and, oh, yeah. and seeing what happens. Um, and then in actually this was recent and, and people also asked me like, how did you do this? And it honestly was just a matter of doing it. I got the program accredited by AFA and NASM. Oh, nice. And I think that, uh, I think that I was, I'm very grateful for it. And I'm, I I always love sharing this story. I'll tell it in a second, but I had built out the program already. So when I submitted all the paperwork and all that, it was, it was not like a, 
a huge thing for me because it was already built out. Like I wasn't creating the program to get it accredited. It was already built out and all I had to do was submit it. And honestly, it was laziness over the course of years <laughs> where I was like, I don't want to deal with figuring out how to do this. You know, I don't blame you. But once you start doing it, it's always a lot easier than. Yes, yes. it's never as hard as you think it's going to be. You build really- these things up in your head and I'm going through the same right thing I- right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's so easy to think of it as like the annoying thing that you'll do someday, you know, like it's not like totally necessary, but it's the annoying thing, you know, that would be good for you and that's whatever. Um, so anyways, finally I got it accredited. And the funny story that I like to share about this is that when I was in college and I was doing my, I think it was just my general group fitness certification through AFA, I failed the exam twice (laughs) because I'm such a bad test taker. I am too. Let me perform for you. Let me show yep. you in real time and I'll yeah. do a brilliant job and I'll, I'll, you know, be really excited about it, but, uh, put me in front of like a Scantron or a multiple choice test. And I, you're like, but it can maybe be this answer. Cause this yeah. is like, the, that's, I do the same thing. Yeah. So I, I, I always, and I'll probably share it again this year. Cause I just got the approval again from AFA and NASM for this yeah. year. I like to share that story because it's like, I didn't even pass my general group fitness cert. And now my program is accredited by the same. That's so awesome. That failed me. That's um, so funny. And yeah, I just, it, things always seem harder than they really are. It's so mm-hmm. true. They make them out to be like some things bigger than they need to be. hundred percent. And once you start, you like sit down, you take the time. You're like, I'm going to do this. You're like, why did this take me so long to do? Yes mental blocks. It's mental blocks. It's those limiting the beliefs and yep. that fear and that anxiety of like, what if this happens? What if I don't do this? Right. And it's like, yeah. just take the steps and you never know what you have been missing out on. And every time I put these limiting beliefs on me, I'm like, why did it take me so long to do this? Yeah. It's a lot <laughs> of like cloudiness for yep. no reason. Cause like you're saying, once you sit down and yeah. do whatever you're hoping to do. It's not so bad. And as you were, as you were saying, gosh, I don't know where, what point it came to, of uh, oh gosh, I just lost my thought, Eliza. It was so good. Um, hmm, we'll come back to it. I know it will, I know it will come. Um, okay. <laughs> God, I'm such an old person. Sometimes I'm like, what was that thought? Process? No, I, I, we're so deep in conversation that I'm sure thoughts yeah. are popping up, popping up everywhere. And we have so many similarities too. And it's interesting because I'm doing a single podcast live at one and it's all about fear. So I'm like, so interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, so within kick it, what do, like, I know you just are kind of pulling back. Can you give us maybe an insight of maybe what you might be thinking about that kick it is going to go to in the future or just some addition? Yes. Um, one thing, so our virtual membership is kind of the main piece or the main leg of our business now. And it's selfishly been such a blessing because it's just really changed the way I live, which sounds dramatic, but it's very true. Um, when you know, this as a personal trainer, when you're glued to a physical space, um, you know, you have to be there at certain times and whatever. And anyway, so selfishly, that's just been a incredible thing for me. Um, This year, what I'm focusing on is actually building out more programming, like specific programming for our members and also additional certifications. So right now we have the level one cert and we have a level two certification, but now I'm, I'm working on bringing specialized certifications within kick it, um, whether it's strength or low impact or pre and postnatal things of that nature, Mm -hmm. um, because there's a huge want and need from it, uh, or for it from our current instructors. And I feel like other people would also be interested in some of these specialty certs. Um, Mm. so that's kind of on the horizon, what I'm most excited about for this year. Ooh, I love it. And for everyone listening in today, what are your programs right now? If they're looking for online, how could people find you? What are your programs? All the good things. Our virtual membership is called the Unlimited Vampire Membership. And basically when you become a member with us, you get unlimited access to all of our content. So we have um, 
low impact classes. We have meditations, cardio, strength. We have a bunch of different options for people because again, the idea is to, you can't be for everybody, but we try to cater to all different levels. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's our main hub where you can interact with myself in live virtual classes. The other instructors get recorded content. Um, That's the best way to kind of interact with us right now. We also do pop-up events when it's warmer out here in New England. Um, We also do have instructors uh, across uh, the States, like West coast as well, um, who will do pop-up events. I'm just thinking like specific to where I am. So those are, those are kind of fun accessories to to what we do virtually. Um, and everything's at kick it by Eliza. So the website, my Instagram, Facebook, which is less exciting these days. (laughs) It's Um, so much less exciting. And it's like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I remember logging into Facebook when I was in college and you had to identify what college you were in. I don't know if this is before oh, yeah. your time, Eliza, but you had to like make sure your college was connected to your face. That's how they started. Yeah. 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 So funny. I know. I love it so much. Well, Eliza, I absolutely loved having you on today um, and talking about fear and the limiting of beliefs and being consistent within your business, knowing that the first, the second, the third year once you keep going the, you just keep building on that foundation. If you don't have the basic foundation, then you're just building on quicksand. So is there anything, one last thought you would like to add to the podcast today, or are you just good? Hmm. I just, I think any, any entrepreneur that's listening just kind of like right there with you. Not every day is easy, but in the end, it's so worth it. It should feel rewarding at the end of the day and Mm. to just keep going small steps, small steps. And there is a quote that I wrote down. I was like, this is a good one for my solo. And I'm just going to take the the quote anyways, courage. Okay. Cause it's about fear. So courage is the knowing what not to fear and Mm being a firefighter, you had to ground yourself like before running into burning buildings. So imagine, but yeah, I, I, I know everyone's like, I can't believe you did that. But it's like, for me, business is that new scary of running into burning buildings. Cause I'm like, you want me to put how much money down on this business right. idea? Right. Right. So it's like a whole different type of fear and yeah. really taking the practices that I did for literally making sure my life was not in a huge amount of danger, even though like running into a burning building is probably the most dangerous thing you could do. Um, but business is such a crazy different beast. So really knowing just being in tune with your body, being able to pull back on your bow and arrow, like you're doing Eliza. I absolutely love you doing that because that's when you get your best ideas. So Totally. Thank you so much for being here today. I absolutely loved this conversation. You're super rad, Eliza. And I'm glad that you were able to drop some nuggets for the listeners here today. So on that, um, you could find Eliza on Instagram at kick it by Eliza. Yep. Awesome. So go find her on Instagram and on that loves, we will talk to you next week. Bye. I hope you are so excited about where you're going because I know I'm excited for you. Thank you so much for listening in today. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to me if you shared it with a girlfriend or posted it on social media, tag me so I could personally say thank you. I am so grateful. And until next time, 